second to last speaker has designed several LARPs which have run in several countries throughout Europe, including Here Comes a Candle and Inside. She is an organizer for LARP, uh, LARPs on location, uh, a strong proponent of creating sa safety culture within LARPs and LARP festivals, and has written articles on body positivity within LARP. Here today to talk about LARP chemistry. Please welcome Laura Wood. Hi, thank you. Um, I just want to say, please don't take this as advice. These are some thoughts I had that I thought actually might be useful in the way I play and possibly for other people as well. Um, please take it and leave it as is useful. Okay, so LARP chemistry. Um, it's a somewhat nebulous concept. I've spoken to lots of people about what it could mean, and no one has really managed to nail it down. You ask two people, you get three different answers. Most people th are pretty sure it's not sexual or romantic attraction, or at least not only that. Um, some people think it's a quality someone can possess, that someone can be good at LARP chemistry. Um, some people think it can occur between two people in a scene, two characters that might not be repeatable. Some, sometimes some, you hear that people think that it is repeatable between two people, but it's not, it, but not something that can happen um, with the same characters played by different players. So there are lots of different takes on it. Um, I think LARP chemistry is something we can learn and develop. Not everyone is going to have it, but I think there are techniques we can use to try and see what it might be, really drill into it and build it. I think what is important in LARP is that we don't play for someone with five minutes, decide not there and ignore that relationship. So, bids to connect. This comes from a relationship advice book. Um, it's a book by Gottman, it's called The Relationship Cure. I haven't read this book, I have read lots of articles about this book in preparation. Um, what Gottman talks about specifically is a unit of an emotional connection, which is a bid to connect. This can be something with your partner, partners, maybe um, it can happen in other relationships too, it might be physical touch, it might be um, oh, I had a terrible day at work today. It might be, how was your day at work today? Um, and this is a kind of an opening to create a, an emotional intimacy, almost a form of emotional currency, where in good relationships, apparently 80% of the time these bids are responded to. So, oh, I'm sorry you had a bad day. Oh, do you want me to tell you about your day? Or a, or a touch back. Um, so I want to look at how maybe this these bids can be used to create connection and create chemistry within LARP. So, okay. For example, let's say you have a horror LARP. Um, in your horror LARP, you've got your simple village person who has realized that things aren't adding up. So they say to their, they say to their friend, you know, I might, I might be wrong, but I think there's something going on here. And the as the player of the friend, you see this for what it is, which is an invitation for play, a bid to connect between your characters. And you say, yes, let's investigate. Let's do something about this. And the connection is made. And that's the beginning of maybe something that could be LARP chemistry. If you keep on playing together, keep on building off each other, if it's reciprocated, if maybe they discover something, go back to that first person. By the end of it, you probably think, great, me and this person, great connection. We play really well together. If you try, try the same thing on someone else and they say, eh, probably not. Anyway, you know what? In my love life, right, okay, not so great. That not that there's never a space for this. And in a in a good in a good LARP with well-developed characters and with bids for connection often being taken, you know, sometimes there's space to say, actually, right now I'm not investigating the mystery, I'm crying over um 
whatever terrible thing has happened to me, um, then that's fine. But most of the time, if particularly if this is an initial approach, it's a rejection, you might be more reluctant to go back to that person, you might take it personally, you might go into some sort of spiral about it, it happens. Um, of course, because we're LARPers, sometimes let's investigate together isn't always the best response. I told you never to mention that. You know that everything is normal. We don't talk about things like that here. You're taking the bid, you're seeing it. You're responding with a similar emotional intensity. And I think that's the important thing. You're reflecting back the intensity that has been given to you. You're not dismissing it. You're not saying, let's talk about something else. Let's talk about, you're talking about that thing. But as long as, particularly if that isn't a complete shutdown, it's something that comes up later, it, it's incorporated as part of play, it's still a great answer and a great response. And it makes you as a player maybe feel this player is connected to what I want. They're connected to um, wanting to play on a particular type of relationship. Um, so what is good chemistry? I think... There is an argument that good chemistry are these bids being continually made, noticed, and responded to. But that's not simple. We come from different cultures. We have different LARPing styles. We have different things we want. We have different neurotypes. We have different needs. So calibration, which I realize is my third point, Nope, not in that slide. Um, so I'll go back and then I'll go forward. Um, calibration, talking to each other. If you don't know each other and you go in and you talk about what you want from play, what a bid might look like, what you want from the relationship, then that is so key. If things are fizzling between you and another player, if you're trying to make emotional bids, um, for play and they're not picking up on it, taking them off game and asking them why is always going to be great. Um, always, particularly if you've, you're saying, you know, maybe your play, their play doesn't want to go in that direction, that's fine. Um, if you know each other well, obviously this isn't something you can control for, and obviously I'm not saying only play with people you know well. But if you do know each other well, quite often you can pick up on what someone is going to want from play. Um, if you talk before the LARP, even if it's not necessarily about the LARP, but also about the LARP, get a feel for each other, get a f um, then that helps. Um, if you're aware you have similar play styles, that helps. Um, if you're aware they have s you have similar interests, both in and outside of play, that, that's going to help you. Um, in terms of play styles, I'm thinking things like dramatic versus low key. Um, maybe you want, you know, if someone is, does want to um, scream every time there's an argument and go storming off and someone else does just wants to zoom out from the conversation, which is, which is great. If, if every time you both want those different things, if that comes across as always the play style, maybe you won't click. Um, maybe that's something to talk about. In terms of interests, similar interests, for example, if I'm playing a bully, I don't want to just launch into bullying people. You know, I want to make sure they, they want that form of oppression. Because if they don't, it's awkward for me, it's awkward for them. My bid is going, you know, right, you come over here, I don't know. Um, and they're going, no, and that's the end of it. So I want to make sure that's what they want so they can play into it. Same with romance. Um, to go back, so what we can do, I think, as players and um, as organisers, um, if we sense there is a bid, engage with it. It's not always going to be obvious. But as I say, people present this in different ways. And sometimes the bid might be, I want to go for a long walk. Can we just, c do you want to come with me? And it's going to be quite low key. Just let's talk about our lives. It doesn't always have to be big and dramatic. And I think that's a really important point that was made earlier. Um, matching intensity, meeting emotion with emotion. So if someone's coming across as quite highly strung. You don't have to match them as highly strung, but you have to match the level of importance that it is to them um, a lot of the time in order for, if you're always playing at different um, levels of importance or different levels of intensity, you might have difficulty. Um, 
responding in a way the other player is comfortable with. Um, that should hopefully be a given. There should hopefully be safety techniques. Hope, um, but also in a way the other player enjoys. So if they want the impression you're a bully, absolutely go for it. Um, but make sure that's what they want. If you're playing romance, make sure it's whatever you're playing is within their comfort level, that sort of thing. Then you're more likely to get a positive response to bids. Um, and also, obviously, don't ignore, neglect your own needs in any of this. Um, I think also, as, as designers, um, this might be something to think about. Um, I was thinking earlier about the idea of having the status line and getting people to at different points in a status line to connect and say, what does this actually mean? So then if you talk about, okay, so this means I'm richer than you, so I'm going to, you know, make you do things for me. Then in LARP, you know when the player of the richer character is going, right, okay, you have to do this for me, you're poorer, you've got that status. That is a bid for connection, a bid for play. Um, so we maybe we should think as designers about how we incorporate that into our design as well. I think the most important takeaway I want really to have is that maybe instead of thinking of LARP chemistry as something people possess, we should think of it as a skill that we can develop. Thank you. <laughs>